power greetings, legacy-minded men. I'm Dr. John L. Mack with the National Men's Prayer Call. We're excited and delighted to once again be able to come and share with you information for your elevation and transformation. Now, the, the National Men's Prayer Call, we're a group of uh, individuals that meet every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 7 a.m. Central Time. Uh, we on social media, different platforms. We'll get with you the information so that you can join that as well. But listen. Uh, Joe has, uh, has just empowered me to come before you and, and share information that will, uh, that will lift you up, encourage you, and hopefully give you the uh, more of a foundation to live this life as a legacy-minded um, follower of our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. So I'm just going to jump right into it because today's subject is really, really powerful, and that's the subject of balance. Balance is uh, is something that oh, we all too often. Uh, Mr. Mark on. Uh, when you're out of balance in any one area, it could tilt the, the scales in a whole different, totally undesirable direction. So we want to just give you a, a couple tips and, and techniques on how to to get in and remain in balance so that you are able to, to live uh, a Christian life as a legacy-minded man, leave a legacy, and as a kingdom citizen, that you can do your part to make sure that we ensure not only the future uh, for our children and for, for coming generations, but that we also have a lifestyle evangelism type of, um, type of existence where people on the outside, people that are not in the body of Christ, will be able to look and say, well, you know what? If that's what being a Christian is all about, I don't mind being called a Christian. I can follow that because as we follow the example set by by Jesus, then the people that see us will be following and seeing his life lived out in our lives. And all too often, um, we look at at this um, at this Christian walk, and uh, people that are that are examining it for the first time, uh, they they hear things like uh, being a slave for Christ, giving up your you know just giving up yourself so that He could live through you, and it gives you you the impression that you become a robot, that you become an automaton, uh, that you don't have uh, your personality anymore. You don't have you don't live for yourself. You've given up. Uh, control of your life to something else that and it's almost cultish that you have um, that you've lost and abdicated your responsibility and your personality which could be further from the truth because when you are in Christ and you are living a Christ-like life what happens is that it becomes fuller it becomes more powerful it becomes more impactful it becomes more influential and now the things that that, that are that are required uh, becomes things that we do out of um, out of habit rather than out of out of a place of uh, of regret so listen as fathers as men of God as as uncles and brothers and and just men period we are, are admonished to, to live our life in a way that is pleasing to God and acceptable to man. And so that balance of being able to be social, saved, and successful, that balance of being able to execute with excellence becomes the standard that we want to, to live our life by and that we should aspire to live our life by. Uh, so it's incumbent upon man to balance out all the components that they find themselves uh, having to to deal with in, in their life, uh, the the balance between good and evil, uh, sad and and glad, uh, blessed and stressed, all these different dynamics that are playing out in our life daily. You know, we it's so easy to be um, sad, but it's so wonderful to be glad. You know, and the word says, "The joy uh, is my strength." The joy of the Lord is my strength. Well, the difference between joy and happiness. Joy comes from within. It's, it just bubbles out and expresses itself. Happiness is an external event that happened, and uh, so that makes us feel better or feel good. But we want to be able to, in every state, be able to, whether we're based or bound, whether we, we're blessed or stressed, we want to be able to find that in that state, that we can have joy, and joy allows us to be able to, to, to look at the journey, look at the situation, look at the circumstance, and not be saddened, not be depressed, but still have hope and knowing that because of our faith that tomorrow is going to be better, and it's going to get gooder and gooder. I did say gooder, so yeah, put that in your pipe and smoke it. Listen, 
There's things in that we need to balance ourselves in. We need to balance our family life, but we also need to balance our faith life. We need to balance it out against our friends, our foes, uh, fatherhood, the fear, all the things that are that that happen in the in the the uh, circumference of our life. We need to have balance and control in. You know, in an earlier uh, uh, recording, I, I talked about the uh, the aspect of um, of emotional. Uh, intelligence and emo the emotional quotient, that EQ as opposed to the IQ. And when your EQ is in balance, is properly aligned with your assignment, then you find yourself being able to, to move forward and not be um, so caught up in feelings and caught up in, in, in triggers. And there's all these landmines and all these triggers out there in life that we, when we, we circumnavigate uh, our surroundings, we find our, uh, all these, these things that can trigger us. And these triggers um, in the past, before you were able to get emotional control, those triggers would cause you to, to fly off the handle, to get, to get angry, to get frustrated, to get mad, to have the anxiety and all these negative emotions that, uh, that cause us to, um, to not give the best face forward as to what it means to be um, a child of God and a, and a born again believer in the blood bought uh, blessing that Jesus provided for us. So getting back in balance, getting an emotional control is very, very important. And especially if you're going to live a life of balance, because the triggers will get you off balance. The triggers, the things that cause you to immediately respond and react, not respond, but react in a way that is uh, already set. You know, that if this happens, you automatically going to get this. If that happens, this is automatically going. I'm going to put my dukes up and we're going to be boxing. But instead, if we can gain control of that emotional aspect of our of our being and just be able to uh, to step, take a step back and be able to uh, to re-engage uh, effectively, that makes all the sense in the world. I was reading a, a book recently that talked about the type of questions that we're asking. Now we have to realize that there's an inner narrative going on all the time. It's always playing in our mind. So the question that we have to propose to that narrative uh, needs to be an empowering question. Powerful people ask powerful questions. And so the disempowering question is, why me? Why don't they help? Why don't they do their part? Why are they always leaving everything up to me? Why don't uh, somebody uh, uh, you know, acknowledge me or bless me or, or help me out? Why, why, why? And then the, uh, the, the issue becomes that you feel like a victim. So we want to get past that victim mentality. We want to get to a position where you're so balanced that you're asking empowering questions. What can I do to, uh, to help in this situation? What is the best course that we can take so that we can solve this, this, this issue or this problem? What uh, do I need to understand so that I, can be, that I can have an understanding of why you're acting this way or why you're saying what you're saying instead of jumping up, why did you say that? So the, the whole balance um, issue is something that um, is predicated on the control of the emotion, that emotional stability, the emotional excellence, where you operate in excellence in getting forth uh, what you want to achieve in life. So, you know, in the um, uh, in the ninth chapter of uh, the book of uh, of uh, of Luke, the Lord talks about the individual that is um, that is uh, basically not fit to plow. So he takes the, he, he, he gets on the plow and he uh, he's looking back and uh, he tells the parable of the young man that wanted to be a, his follower. He said, "I follow you anywhere, master, because you have the words of life, and and I want to understand that." And uh, he said, "But first, I need to go say bye to my parents." And uh, the Lord said something pretty disturbing. He said, "Anybody that puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom." So he's saying, no, you don't need to go say bye to your parents. You just need to get into this uh, to, to follow me with, uh, with all diligence. Because often when you go back and, and, um, and tell your parents, hey, guess what? I'm going to follow this, uh, this radical man named Jesus to turn it over the money tables and, and this, uh, this, uh, that's causing all this chaos and confusion in the kingdom, in the world. And uh, I'm going to follow him and quit my job and uh, not get married and just, uh, you know, 
I'm going to be going off and follow him by. They're going to say, hold up, time out. What, are you crazy? You need a job. You need, to, And they're going to try to talk you out of it. And that's so often what happens in the kingdom. When you tell the, your, the people in the past, hey, I'm following Jesus now. I'm a, I'm a born-again, blood-bought believer. And uh, that government, I'm a Christ follower. I'm a, I'm a follower of Christ. They're going to look at you and say, man, you're going to be, no, you might want to rethink that. So they'll try to talk you out of it. So he said, any man that puts his hand to the plow and looks back is unfit for the kingdom. And that kind of puzzled me, almost disturbed me. But think about this. Um, I grew up on a farm on a little town, in a little town in, uh, in Florida, Two Egg, Florida. So small, they had to pipe the sunshine in. Look it up. I Google it. I guarantee it's real. And um, we had cotton land and tobacco and what have you. And early on, my grandmother, who owned the property, had, uh, had a couple of mules. One of them was named Old Doc. But she would, so they would, um, she, would get, she would hire people to come in, and they would plow the field. So they would hook up a yoke uh, and a plow to this uh, to this animal, a, a mule in this case. But back then it was an oxen, and they would um, they would they would pl uh, plow uh, a row. They would they would they would the mule would walk, and, and they would uh, the, the plow would be harnessed to it, and they would plow a row and just keep plowing rows, and it'd be straight rows so that they would be able to harvest it uh, more effectively and be able to have some order so there wouldn't be confusion in trying to figure out where everything was at. Well, Jesus is saying, if you put your hand to the plow and you look back, what's going to happen is that row is not going to be straight, and then you're going to have some problems in, in harvesting and, uh, and, and getting, it, uh, getting it in order. So that's what is important for us to understand as men that uh, we don't want to put our hand to the plow and look back. That when we make that decision to be a part of the vision of being a born-again Christian, of being a, a follower of Jesus and, and just going exactly where he went, stepping where he, doing the thing that's going to take us and make us more effective kingdom citizens, that is the important thing. That's what creates the balance. So if you don't know Jesus Christ as the Lord and leader of your life, you're probably thinking that you're having a great life, but once you do, you'll find out how much greater your life is, how much easier it is to, to, to navigate life, and that you'll, that you'll find more joy, more pleasure, more, more of everything, because the, the goodness of God is just an expansive. It's like, he said, a little yeast, leavens the whole loaf. And when you put that yeast in, now all of a sudden your life becomes more powerful. Your relationships become sweeter and better. Um, you're able, even your job, everything that you deal with now has a different perspective and you're able to receive and achieve more. Hey, I could go a, a lot deeper into this. Uh, we could talk about uh, the emotional excellence a little bit more, but uh, that's what I wanted to share with you this morning. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, make it a point to find a Bible believing church where you can go and be able to surrender your life to, to the Lord so that you can gain control of your emotions. You can gain control of your experiences, that you can gain control and leverage it so that you can become a better kingdom citizen, a better father, better husband, a better member of society, and that you can give more. And the more you give, you because of the reciprocity principle, you'll be able to receive more. And the most that you, what you really are looking to achieve is that balance. So that because of that balance, you're able to be a better, better person. Have an awesome day. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you were blessed by the material. We also want to remind you that there are several great ways to make sure you're staying up to date on our content as part of our 360 legacy plan. First, subscribe to this channel by clicking subscribe below. You can also download our incredible new app in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Just search Legacy Minded Men. And finally, visit our website at Legacy mindedmen.org for more information on what we believe, upcoming events, and how to join a group. Thanks again for watching.